I don't really have an intro on this one, I'm just kind of jamming. You know what, 3, 2, 1! Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, it is the B&R stream today on this fine 5th of August 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week, and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, my week has been, um, I, if I say chaos, I, chaos is hard. Chaos, it's, it's more, what, well, how do I put it? It's not really chaos. Things are going good, but I am doing so much to try and make this stuff good. So it's like, ah, so, so much involved. So I, I would like to just <laughs> say as a big thanks to everyone, just everyone in my life. If you're watching this, thank you, you, if you don't watch this, but I know you, thank you as well. Cause, uh, it's very, very tough to, not very tough, but it, there's lots of, there's lots of interactions people have all over the world. And I guess it's good just to go, Hey, you know, like. You know, thank you to person who, you know, came over and, and, and fixed the thing in my house and the person who, yeah, I don't know, P person who, who, who I buy food from, it's all good. Anyway, speaking of thanks, let's say thanks to 3D Realms for uh, making good ol' whoop, Duke Nukem 3D. Oh, there you go, that's it, that's the audio. Um, so yeah, so in the last stream, uh, we did, uh, the whole first episode of, uh, LA Meltdown, and we got most of the way through Lunar Apocalypse. I think we got three levels to go. Uh, one thing I just want to show off before, uh, I get to the end was, uh, or get, get to where I was. Uh, we got up to the Abyss, and I couldn't, f <laughs> for some reason, my, me trying to type no clip in the, uh, in the, um, console didn't work, but at the very end of the level where we've got this part here and you can walk in and fight the final boss, uh, if you no-clip through the wall in, uh, this one particular- oh, I guess I would have had it on. If you no-clip into the wall at this one particular point, you end up in this one little room with a security panel. Uh, the other side, if you go through to it, uh, points to a, um, tiny little room with a, uh, With a uh, end level portal, which doesn't mean too much because uh, it kind of warps you just to the secret level again. Um, but there does exist an E1L7 level, the Faces of Death. Now in this level, you are faced with. Oh, let's let's turn off the no clip. There you go. Um, but you're faced with a what is? I'm, I'm gonna say just uh, death. You're faced with a, well, one guy there, one guy there, one guy there, one guy there. It's a bit tricky. It's a bit of a, it's a bit, it's a bit of a lot of stuff. Now, if you activate, oh. See, this is what I mean. I suddenly now can't type in the console. They've walled me out. Uh, but there's no actual end to this level. But the, uh, 20th anniversary port does add an actual ending to this level, um, should it exist. Like, you've got these weird little teleports all over the place. Which, uh. Let you start seeing uh, developer names, um, <laughs> but uh, it's a bit of a meme level. It's not really meant to be uh, explored. Well, it, it explored, yes. It's a bit of a oh, little room here. You also get a lot of your weapons, so it's cool. But uh, it's not one for you to beat, so. Let's just continue on the game, shall we? Uh, to the where I saved. And we'll, uh, we'll, uh, oh, I'm gonna drop another save right here. There we go. To the continuing on. Um, so yeah, so we got to deal with enemies everywhere, I guess. Uh, but yeah, no, this has been a rather, you know, eventful week. I think there's been lots of things that have happened uh, over the past hey, few days. Um, so, uh, there's there's quite a bit to talk about. Um, I think let's jump into the most pertinent, which is, yet again, Blendo talks about Intel. But uh, I guess I can talk about this from the context of a few things have happened. I love this little outdoor bit and how obviously, by the way, the rest of the building, like, does this go up? Where is it going? I assume it's a lift that goes down. Nice, I'm glad I took two hits from him. I love these outdoor bits. This is a very, like, fun level in terms of just its, its structure and geometry. Everyone's favorite enemies, by the way. 
I'm glad you all love this this enemy type as well from last stream because I want to die. I swear. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. Uh, we've also got our wonderful freeze thrower uh, right there. But yeah, no. So the intel stuff. Ah, uh, let's let's do a very brief recap. So. Uh, Intel 13th Gen came out around October of 2022. Uh, I bought my 13900K, which is a top tier processor, in January of 2023. Uh, Intel's, uh, what would it have been? Um, uh, Media Lake, uh, was reportedly not really working well for the high end desktop, really for anything above the i5 kind of level. So they ended up just kind of scrapping that and leaving that just for mobile, and in turn for the Intel. 14th gen desktop, they basically refreshed Raptor Lake, the 13th gen again. The refresh is... Oh, hold on. Pipe on them in an effective way. Yes! <laughs> um, they refreshed uh, 13th gen as 14th gen in October of 2023. Uh, fast forward to about... Mm, uh, February. This is when people suddenly started saying, Hi, I'm having issues with Intel 14th Gen. And then people went, How come there's no issues with 13th Gen? And then the answer was, Well, I guess we did have issues with 13th Gen. And so on. Uh, a few months passed and people started reporting this more and more. Until uh, it started to ramp up a bit too much. It was like, we can't recommend Intel products. A lot of reviewers and media of the like couldn't recommend Intel couldn't recommend Intel products uh, because, you know, Intel aren't making a statement. Intel then make a statement saying, hi, yes, it's the motherboards. And the motherboards are like, uh, no. And then, uh, Intel's like, you should do these, uh, some, you know, baselines. And, uh, so a bunch of these motherboards then shipped out Intel baseline specs, which, uh, I would like to highlight as well. I talked about in, uh, the Dragon Quest 2 uh, Day 4 stream. I, I specifically looked it up, I was like, I swear I talked about this. And I looked it up, yep, totally did. Uh, the baseline specs came out uh, at the end of April, and uh, then comes, uh, you know, some reports of, oh, you know, I guess it's stable, but the performance is bad. So then Intel went, this is not our baseline, you were just using the name Intel for some inexplicable reason. I'm not really saying much about this level, but I'm liking where it's going. Oh yeah, I remember this bit, the little sewer tunnel. This is a very Star Wars Dark Forces kind of... You know, there's a lot of air ducts in Dark Forces. Eh. Damn, I'm good. Is that not a wall you can break open? Okay. I hate that it's like, you can swim in it, but you can't stand in it. I don't Lots of that kind of stuff all over. Well, back up we go, back into this room. Maybe not quite back into it, but sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, make. Well, this is fun. Kicking time. <laughs> it's just kicking time. I don't want to deal with these guys, I swear. Look at all the stuff they've got in their little hidey hole, so. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, reviewers from May were going, hey, this is, like, terrible, we're never gonna recommend Intel again. Intel then goes, okay, well, this is pretty bad. And eventually, over time, they then went, okay, maybe it was a microcode bug. And, uh, there was a Gamers Nexus video from maybe a month ago saying, uh, that also one of the rumors was maybe there was an oxidization issue where some processors were, um... Uh, you know, in, in manufacturing had a bad mixture and were oxidizing too soon and that's causing the, the very, very quick degradation. And Intel then made a statement saying, yes, but it's unrelated. And then, uh, now we get into a bit of a complex scenario. So the most recent development that I want to add in this bunch is, uh, there's a very recent report from Puget Systems, uh, who are famous for making the Puget Bench, but also they sell their own systems. Um, I love these, uh, astronauts in the, um, in the tubes. This is a very, like, uh, what's the term? 
for when the level sort of looks like real life. Not looks like real life, but you know what I mean. And we did all this just to get a blue key card, so I think it's good to bail from here. Oh, hi there. Kind of wacky room, though, I'll tell you that. Um, oh, yeah, we can do that. We can do the, you know, leave via the train again. Dude, I love these train bits. Because it's just like, well, it's actually in the level. You can see it's just a long corridor, but it's kind of fun. Um, Puget Systems release a, uh, a study. Oh, oh, and also some com Sorry, just, just before in the timeline, uh, there was a level one text video basically going, hi, yeah, we asked some companies, and some of them said off the record that, uh, uh, you know, their failure rate was close to like 50%. They were getting like some real, real mad, uh, mad like failure rates for uh, these processes. Um, and, uh, like, oh, they're running workstation boards. They shouldn't be overclocking. And, uh, some later studies found. No, they... Well, not not the, 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 the people running the servers were overclocking. Come get but more the boards by default were overclocking. Like, if you just got a board and you hit load Intel defaults, and it's, like, overclocking out of the box, it's like, huh, what's going on there? Um, so Puget Systems, uh, released their, their um, you know, their... I guess figures of how many systems that they've shipped, and how many they uh, uh, you know had to claim was there was a failure, and this has to be returned in some way. At least like the um, you know, the parts have to be returned. The Intel CPU has to be returned. Um, a lot of these fun secrets. I'm finding quite a few of these secrets. Are we gonna have? Oh, I thought we were gonna have like a bunch of people on there. Oh, we're definitely gonna have someone on the way out though. I tell you. I love these doors as well, where it's like, it's technically just two sprites, it's like a door frame sprite, but it gives you that shape in a way that's effective. I'm taking a bit of damage from these fellas. Let's come back for that health on the way back, right? You shoot out the glass, how could you? Um, so anyway, what was the, what did their figure show? They showed uh, a couple of things. First of all, they showed uh, the breakdown of failures from Intel processors per month with a chart breakdown or like with a you know multi-series breakdown uh, stacked bar chart for each generation. So you could see how many errors there were or failures there were in a month and how many of those were each generation of CPU. In particular, and the important thing to note there is over the past... Uh, I'm standing so high. In the past... Uh, it's a bit loud to talk over these guys, I'm sorry. Uh, probably some rockets or some pipe bombs here. I'll oh, just, just swim or sink. Sink or swim, and I'm just gonna run into all these boys. Eh. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. What a fun little platform, by the way. Gotta oh. not shoot the babes on that one. Hi there, how you doing? Ruby. Can't swim here, I guess. Oh. Hi there. came from here, right? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, so, so what were their figures? They showed, uh, yeah, a decently high rate of errors from May onwards, particularly with Intel 14th gen. Um, 13th gen is weirdly a bit stable. It doesn't, sh like, the errors are kind of constant. And it's like, you're always going to get some errors over time. So the fact that there are some is not the end of the world, but what you particularly don't want to see is a change over time. The spike in the 14th gen is definitely, you know, oh, okay. Uh, they also provided a secondary graph about errors detected ahead of time and errors that, um, you know, which they call shop failures and, and failures that happen in the field. So once they've shipped out the system to a customer. And uh, the breakdown is not an insane number were, like to customers. Quite a bunch were noticed in the field from May onwards. Kind of odd. The graph also shows a decent spike. In fact, actually a similarly heighted spike. Um, a 
this is it. This is it. Oh, gosh. This, <laughs> this is a room and a half, ain't it? Uh... What can I use? Because I know I've got like a bunch of explosive weapons. Whoops. <laughs> Make the UI go. Let's use a free throw. Oh, that could have gone better. Alright, Devastator it is. simpler was it oh I, don't, oh I didn't even realize there were three of them that's why that's why I guess I got a devastator back there Ooh, everyone likes blowing up a good a good old-fashioned server base there we go. Um, so yeah they showed a fairly equal sized uh, spike for um 11th gen way back at the end of 2021 um and that was kind of curious as well uh because you know everyone's raving about 14th gen and how intel have never done this before but it's like according to puget systems there's a, a fairly sizable number of failures for 11th gen um they also did the breakdown just the percentage of of uh um systems per generation so the percentage of that generation's failures and it shows that 14th gen and 13th gen are a little high they're around the four percent range and 13th gen had more in the field failures and that probably is just because maybe you know things aren't well that that's because a lot of the more recent failures were 14th gen 13th gen's had just its time i guess but 11th gen has a remarkably higher failure rate around eight percent and also, Ryzen 5000 and 7000 in their chart. Now, they didn't show anything else, so I'm not sure about their 3000s when they were older, or Intel 9th gen? Ooh. Stopped at 10th gen, and 10th gen was, like, smooth as. Uh, 12th gen was fairly smooth as well. But 13th and 14th, uh, uh, Ryzen, uh, 11th gen, oh, terrible. So, but why is 14th gen less than 11th gen? That is a good question. And, and I mean, they're different generations, so okay, sure. Oh, hi there. <laughs> was he meant to get in? I don't think he was. Good old body armor. This is a fun map, though, I tell ya. Probably because we don't have as many of the suicide bombers as I'd expect. Love this reception area as well. I believe we have a secret level to look for as well, so I want to keep my eyes peeled. Cool. I was going to say, I love this like little outdoor bit. <laughs> look at this! Get out of there. I love how you get to go up this, uh, this little bridge up to the top here. Come get some. And you can turn that off, which gives you a bit of health. Very nice. And then uh, I guess we can drop down, which you know where that's going to end up. Oh, <laughs> Oh boy, I saw his, I saw his hiding in there. I'm like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Um, so so that's the two big take homes. I think they show um, a couple of other. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's mostly the charts were mostly breaking that down, but this definitely leads into a big question, which is how come Puget Systems says their failure rate is like four percent? 4% seems a lot lower than 50% that some others were claiming. People on Reddit, I mean, it's it's Reddit. Hi, are you, hi, are you still yelling? Okay, sure. Let's see how many of these. Oh, yeah. Get some, get some of that monster in fighting. So 
a lot of enemies in this level, I'll tell you that. If we're gonna have a long level, you know. Oops. Um, so, yeah, so why is the failure rate like this? And also, 4% seems remarkably low, doesn't it? Well, well, it's all not remarkably low, because, uh, like, for, for a part that's less than a year old, I'm probably not expecting a failure rate that high. That doesn't sound right, but given that AMDs is around that high, and no complains about AMD, right? That's going to be something more to it. So, Puget Systems prides himself on favoring stability, and they particularly note that they've never trusted motherboard BIOSes for years since uh like uh what was it multi-core enhancements started being a thing around 2018 or so they just went nope not trusting any of that and uh so they went yeah you know we're gonna plug in our own BIOS settings and we're gonna test and we're gonna make sure that things are stable and all that so all the systems that they push out They've been doing some manual BIOS tuning, which is a big distinction, because lots of other systems will do defaults. They will just pop the system in the board, does it work, cool. This is a curious room. I assume that's not a blow it up kind of room, right? Maybe it feels a bit more like a secret, but we'll crawl out. It kind of makes sense to continue the level in that direction, though, because it's like it's not like there's anything else in over there. It's not like I'm gaining a key card or anything. Although there is a uh, mystical room over the 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 um the doorway, the hallway. If you notice, I'll just head through here again, just to double check. But I'm pretty sure this just you know goes up over a bridge and then drops you down. Seems normal. That's a picture of Earth. Man, it's a bit of a damage take, isn't it? Yeah, what am I looking for in here? Other than making a noise. Am I just blind? Am I just, like, not able to see a thing right now? Because I'm not able to... S blah, blah, blah. Can't spot it. Oh. Oh, it's a portal. It's a portal, of course. Oh, hi there. Yeah, how you doing? Ooh. Get out of my face, I don't need you there. Well, I've apparently killed every enemy, but... Where's the doors? I may have spawned like a ton more dudes. What an interesting wall I broke open. Oh, check it out! I've spotted the secret level! Wow! That was, that was pure accident by the way. <laughs> That's what you get, play with the pipe bombs, find the secret level. Oh, just chain gun. We good? Did we get everyone? Ooh. So many enemies though, I tell ya. There you go, that's the end of the level, so. What a, what a curious little, little secret exit there. Okay, let's go into it, because you know where this level would have gone otherwise. Fairly long level though, look at that part time, whoa. Gonna rip him a new one. Gonna rip him a new one. Lunatic Fringe, I love this level. This level is good fun. So, the way this level works, it's fairly small, fairly contained, and sort of plays like a deathmatch map. Hello there. Uh, is you have these uh, these buttons all over the shop. You've got to basically shoot all the buttons, I believe, in order to fully activate just doors and other kinds of things like that. As you wander around this level, you'll find these enemies here. It's 
get him with the old faithful, I guess. The shrink ray. As you wander around this level, it goes all green and stuff. No secrets as well, and the level, the enemy counts pretty weak. Uh, there you go. There we go. Uh, you can also spot these, just get some items, you know, if you need more items. Uh, so we got more of these buttons. As you, as you shoot all, uh, four buttons, you'll open up the, uh, end room where, yes, there is indeed a guy there. Um, and I'm also hearing tons of enemies, but you may notice, didn't you just do a full lap around here? And the answer is yes. We have some fun, uh, sector over sector kind of shenanigans where, and the map makes it pretty clear as you rotate around, and there's way more enemies than we would have thought, but as you go around... Time to die in the secret level, apparently. Hey, uh, it's one of them. There's like three of them, isn't there? I'm seeing a phantom right there because he's technically room over room right now. So this is the fun part. This whole level wraps around, and like one side is covered in, in green goop, and one side is perfectly fine. And I just magically pushed myself into the wrong side, apparently. <laughs> I'm toying around with the portals, oh no! <laughs> Dang it. Gonna have to get him with the old faithful. Yeah, what's going on there? What happened there? There's still another one in there, yeah. Well, how about let's try and grab the health. And then we can use the health to heal. Uh, and we can spam this a bit more. Uh, first try. So this inner part actually wraps around fairly quick. Because it's like... I, oh, and you, you see what I mean on the on the map. As you wander around. No, I think the map's just doing its own thing right now. Point is green. Map of the USA. Which is totally not a secret, by the way. I think that just activates the sound. That's not actually a guy there. Who wants some? I may have just unactivated it by like <laughs> pressing that button. There you go. Uh, but the whole point is that once you're up on this ledge, you can jump into the center here, and there's a guy potentially still trying to shoot at me. Easy. I hear him, he's like over there. I love this as well. <laughs> it's like portal there. They're fine there. And you got a little shrink ray zap here. Make the run, and you're out of the level. No idea where that last guy was chilling, but sure. Listen, it's a wacky level. Everyone likes a good old wacky level. I like wacky levels, don't you? So, uh, we're up to the final level of the world, of the episode, which is Overlord. Probably not a tons long level, but we'll see how it goes. I do remember this one giving me some uh, level design grief though. I'm like, oh boy, what am I looking for? What's 
of these things all over the place though. <laughs> buttons, buttons. So did it, I was like, did anyone fall down here? Or? I'm hearing someone. Oh, hi there. There you go. Which one's the one that I came out of? That one, I think. Force fields. Curses. Sure, yeah. Um, so it's a big complicated story. So let's let's bounce back to uh, the particular points because this Puget Systems uh, info is very useful because it gives us um, a timeline. We suddenly now can start. Oh my gosh, that was a that was a very rookie error. I apologize, uh, but this gives us a timeline of things that we can actually start looking for. So first of all. Hi, by the way. So first of all, uh, we can see that the number of 11th gen failures is a lot, um, you know, very high. And uh, in particular as well, the number of, sorry, oh my gosh, I'm taking all this damage. I'm like, ah, I just want to use the pipe bombs for once. That's all, that's all, but apparently blowing up this wall, or blowing up this guy, makes all this blow up. Starts wandering through the gaps there. Uh, you son of a bitch. And the rocket's a king every time. <clears throat> so yeah, this room I used to get like rather confused in for some reason. I'm not too sure why. And you got and you got the green grabblers, the green dudes, chilling over there. So meant to go up some staircase, and you'll get there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, so let's go, okay, well, what exactly is happening in May that's causing a lot of people to identify that this is happening? I think that's when the peak of the, um, I'm gonna slightly call it hysteria. I, I believe there is merit to this, and I, and, and I'm gonna, you know, there's more to the story, but, uh, the whole, like, oh, my, my Intel 13th gen or 14th gen CPU is FUBAR. It's now, like, it's gonna break, it's gonna be destroyed. You know, like, all my mates are telling me, it's like, bro, you're on 13th gen. It's like, just, you know, keep your warranty on the on the ready. And, well, I agree, or it's like, you should always have your warranty on the ready. Uh, like, my chip's working fine still. And for reference, I set some power limits for my chips right away. Puget Systems, I think, also had that, and that's why their failure rate is a lot lower. This indicates to me that the motherboards were doing something silly, silly billy, and the answer is, it's probably a mixture of everything, I believe. Um, but, uh, from, from what I know, and from what I've said before, I believe a lot of motherboards had very uh, spurious limits. They basically were like, hey, you know, set the power limits at 4,000, what set the um, the currents to like oh I don't um, to uh, to like 700 amps max or even not there at all enable multi-core enhancement which tries to make all the cores run at the same frequency which in my use case I don't want I don't really need that that's fine to you know turn off and also that's not even an Intel spec feature also these people just chilling from the ceiling what are you doing up there so uh. I think it's what is where where do we go from here? It's not it's not in the waterfall. It's uh just there. This portal we just closed. Despite them floating, they do abide by the rules of platform. Did I get him? I think I might have got him actually. This is a room and a half, ain't it? Throw some pipe bombs while kicking. Well, we're still gonna have to deal with a few of these guys chilling around, aren't we? But uh, open this door and uh, oh, check it out! I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. Thank you, dude. This is the Overlord. Uh, also, uh, can head down here for a bit of health. The jetpack, which is a bit. Bit of a late, <laughs> late acquisition, ain't it? And I'm 
pretty sure this is like right at the oh it's not the star level it's there okay still though <laughs> it's like oh okay that's where we are um yeah i wanted to get this guy and then go in a little little hidey hole over here a bit more level than just wandering straight to the end like this room where they're talking about power plants Uh, this leads back to the starting room, you know, as well as also there's a doorway that you couldn't have gone into. Not a particularly long level, but uh, still, you know, it's all it's all G. So, um, so I thought, yeah, a lot of motherboards were running silly settings out of the box. Now, for me, this was on stable day one, uh, but for other people, I could totally get, oh, you know, like it's, uh, you know, I guess it runs fine on their chips, but. Mm, a bit intense and definitely can be leading to degradation. So I'd say not ideal. You probably want to, you know, address that. He's uh, just chill. Hi there. See ya. Get some rockets on him. He's a fast boy. The bosses in this game don't really mean much beyond a circle strafe kind of spam though. If anything, this guy's a little easier because he doesn't have the hit scan. But he does take a bit of damage. Oh, there we go. We have taken him out. So what does Duke do? It's voice acted as well. <laughs> it's just all audio this time. Very, very nice. Alright, here we go. Duke cracked his knuckles and smirked. I need a stiff drink, a shower, and a soft skin belly to lie my head on. A nearby monitor flickered on, and an incredibly ugly face spoke an ominous message. The Moon Assault Overlord has been defeated, as was our Battle Lord on Earth. But while Duke Nukem has been distracted, our main attack wave has begun its final assault on Earth. We shall obliterate all resistance. Guess again, Freak Show, Duke growled. Duke's coming back to town. And the last thing that's gonna go through your mind before you die is my size 13 boot. And there we go. So we now have one more episode, which I'm going to try and do the entirety of uh, <laughs> this stream. It's done. There we go. Do, 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 do. Name it. It's time. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, no. You got to start it. You got to start it with the line. Come get some. He's got to say the line. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. I'm all out of gum. It's time to chew gum and eat ass. I'm all out of ass. Dick kicking. To the king, baby. Devastator right off the bat is good fun. Uh, but yeah, no, we're back in uh, in uh, Hollywood. Back on Earth. And uh, ready for some fun, fun kinds of finishing levels for the game. Uh, so again, this episode, I believe it's got two secret levels and it's 11 levels long. So a fair bit of content. I took all this damage all of a sudden. Well, you gotta take a bit as when you fall here. But... Oh, because of suicide bombs, that's why. Listen, I heard him, it didn't click in my head. It's a bit of a cruel start to the, to the level, isn't it? I'm stuttering, I'm sorry. Um. Now, uh, okay, so motherboards are playing silly settings. People, I think one other thing as well is that maybe there was a recently new kind of experience or, or piece of software that people were running that was exemplifying the problems. I don't think it was causing the problems. The Oodle game decompression certainly is uh, one where it's like, this is a program that's existed for a while, but it's only now causing problems. I'm pretty certain it's not, it's not particularly us. Um, and the answer is, yeah, I believe, you know, some, like, crazy bursty, uh, workloads is probably what causes the problem. I like how just shark, that's an enemy right now. Oh, 
pipe bombs. Wow, my ears. So I was gonna say I don't have um. Help me. That guy is. Land on your pal, will ya? Um, but uh, but yeah, I I like my hunch is if people were noting this around February, my hunch is that perhaps there was like a you know maybe a game or something because uh, you know Reddit, so it's probably a game. Um, that's causing a lot of. Uh, that's causing a lot of people to notice that their processor is on silly settings, we'll say. Um, eh. <laughs> uh, so perhaps maybe the sudden spur of people playing Helldivers, for example. Um, I'm not saying it's specifically Helldivers, but, you know, I'd, I'd probably just say, hey, here's an explanation of a game. Here's a zeitgeist of a game, brand new AAA game, and people are experiencing the problems. Because that's just how it's, how it's going right now. Um, so then, you know, the reports start coming in. People don't quite realize what's going on. They'll say it's the game, but then the game's like, uh, it's clearly, you know, based on the hardware. We're getting lots of errors based on this particular hardware, Raptor Lake. That's... Okay, sure, we can now look at the Raptor Lake parts. And this is when, suddenly, we're now talking about Jetpack, by the way. Level 1, so... This will be interesting. Are they right above me in this room, or...? Probably... Ooh, revealed a, a hive of them. But where? Oh, first aid. Very nice. Listen, anytime there's a very unique poster or anything in any of these games, you're not just like guessing like random wall textures that blend in. So a lot of these stand out pretty odd. But we still don't have the, uh. Did I have Devastated? Yes. Still blew up someone though, but. That's what they get for being in the middle. This really pisses me off. Register. Ka-ching. Ka-ching. Why? Why do we have teleports all over? I don't know, but that's what makes it wacky. That's what makes it wacky. <laughs> it's just kind of, hey, you know. And you can also <clears throat> open this door and... Wow! Un unabashed just MasterCard and Visa. There you go, got my visa. Uh, there's also this area out here, which we briefly saw, but if you do a jump here. Yeah, there are a couple of dudes down there. If only I had my pipe bomb still. Uh, yeah, might as well just go in with the, uh, with the chain. We're gonna need that for a red key card. We got two key cards. Get rid of this guy as well, alright. There you go. And a door here, which was probably just, you know, the end of it. You can open this gate as well to get back into the main area. So we're dealing with more invaders, apparently. That's right, there were like 47 enemies in this level, and now there's like. 70, they're just all spawning in. How oh, could they? Well, at least there's not spawning in right behind here. Oh! The pig cops, they're back! And then I immediately got blown up because 40 health means 40 health. Well, you know what this means. Explosive? Do I not? Okay, I was like, I've got to have at least one explosive right now. At least these guys mean lots of shotgun ammo. Yeah, 
Here we go. Get on the mic. Very nice. I think we've got more pickups coming. There. Oh, no. Another pickup. It's on the sushi bladder, which has um, skulls and pills and rockets. And a, and a big cop just casually chilling around there. Not sure what's in that cupboard, but you know, okay. Uh. So then, then comes, you know, a lot of people in May, or in, in late April going, okay, my processors are dying. This spurs on the Intel baseline profile. Now, at the time, I said the baseline profile seems to just have very, very aggressive voltage curves. It's, I don't think it's actually fixing the problem. I think it's potentially making the problem worse. What a weird teleport just there. I think it's making the problem worse. It's dumping more voltage which in turn just leads to higher power, but also the processor is just gonna hit power limits or thermal limits or whatever, because that's the whole point of the profiles is at the very least, they do set power limits. Um, and in Gigabyte's case, very aggressively low for some reason. Um, but I thought mm, for the 250 watts, I don't think that's healthy for it because you're dumping very high amounts of voltage for relatively straightforward. I love how the sink is also connected to this underground like layer. And it just connects back here. Like, why Why is everything in this level just connecting back to itself? Very interesting. Very curious. Gonna have your pills here. Chill room. Oh. That's come for me, apparently. But, uh, but yeah, like... I think a lot of people who reactively clicked on, you know, oh, I need this BIOS because otherwise my processor will eventually die, and in turn, I think, you know, read into the hysteria. I personally have, and I believe, based on my measurements, it's like my processor, I'm running at a fairly conservative voltage, like 1.35, which is ordinary? I don't think anyone would say it's going to degrade that hard at 1.35 volts, even under, like, serious load. Um, I think it does peak to, like, 1.4 if you're really driving it. It's not 1.72. It's not that. That's, that's what people were seeing with the Intel baseline spec. So, obviously, Intel reacting to that goes, that's terrible. That shouldn't be happening at all. People shouldn't be using those. We're going to make a proper spec, or rather, <laughs> Push the, push the motherboard manufacturers into releasing the real spec, or using the real spec. And, um, I think we've seen something better. So, that's all good. But for that bit of time, and also anyone who's on those BIOSes, and perhaps even, I don't know, actually, I feel like some people even today, the default is destroying the processors. The Intel, sorry, not the default. The Intel, well, actually, yes, the default. Uh, somewhat, but also the Intel baseline specs is killing them even more and And this is like I think it's just because the urgency of oh you have to get a fix out You have to apply the fix or else you're gonna destroy your component and then These users do not know better and I that's fine. I'm not, I'm not blaming them for well, Maybe I'll blame them for responding a lot and saying oh my gosh my process is running terribly when understanding some of the specs and things like that should resolve some of it but i also do think hey default should be working i totally agree with that it's a bit of blame on everyone's side that's that's the problem no one in particular is to blame everyone did something that has caused this chaos <laughs> what a the freaking the freaking flying like vehicles i'm not used to fighting them again i tell you favorite enemies actually no the, obviously it's the, it's the droids the drones you look back here and uh where is it? we get there federal loan and trust very very nice oh hi there 
How you doing? I, I was thinking, was there another enemy that's maybe a bit more pertinent to go for? But nah. Yeah, who? Oh, oh, I was like, hold on, pro shot. Ugh. 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 There we go. Very nice. So obviously, we got going. One more. Ah, oh, dang it. Climb in here. We got our freeze thrower back. Take a sip. It actually does replenish health. You seeing that? Yeah. Thirsty boys win. Uh, I'm not really sure if there was anything in here though. I think the bank is really where I want to go. Actually, that looks like a door. Yeah, totally is. Very nice, even if I'm hitting myself a ton in the mix. Get out of here, chair. Key card. Can you open these doors as well? Nah. It's worth a try. Cool. We'll go down the normal way. I'm hearing someone though. Hi there. Oh, and I see armor up there as well. I think he can jump. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and some trip mines. And some mega health. You could probably skip a lot of these levels given that you got the jetpack pretty early on, you know what I mean? But um So yeah, so uh lots of lots of um you know, people panicking into that. That, I believe probably explains the spike of reports that Puget got, both out in the field and also the updated BIOSes. Because I think Puget themselves probably went, well, we probably want to be running off these BIOSes, but then they can't get it to validate their tests. And so what do you do? Well, some of them can. And I think this is another thing. So I haven't mentioned Intel being to blame. Now I will. I believe that some of these parts do not fit their specs. And that is definitely a problem. They need to make sure that the specs actually can be met by the pro products they shipped out. So either I'm lucky, I got a real lucky one, or, uh, you know, I know something that apparently everyone doesn't. I don't know. So, um, I gotta be careful about these lasers everywhere, I tell ya. Push button. Got this wonderful bank vault. going on here which I'm pretty sure you gotta open yeah you get to open different locks so this first one what is this only two is open and then I'm pretty sure it's yeah one two three all close actually if I keep rotating this eventually they'll all, they'll all open right no doesn't There you go. Just for some boots and uh, this. Just so you know which spinny spinny gear thing you're standing on. Where are we going? for a red key card. Ooh, another jetpack and protective boots. The protective boots weren't even that necessary, were they? Didn't need them here, did you? Uh, I don't know why I can stand on the gear, but sure. <laughs> Just to somehow get out of here. So, uh... So moral of the story is, I think that's probably the explanation for why there's the spike. Um, oh yeah, opening this room I forgot. Look at this! Come on! Look 
Jesus! Oh my gosh! Jeez! The ride never ends, apparently. Alright, how do we, how do we take them out without like dying on the inside? That, I guess. And I think I spawned one of them somewhere. Also, we blew up this little side side door, which, uh, well, leads to the rockets right up here. Oh, hi there. I wonder if I could do a pro jump. Back up to the start of the level. Woo! For no, for no better reason, but yeah. Um, so that probably, yeah, I don't know, to me that explains the, um, the discrepancy of why there's been a big sudden jump in this kind of stuff. Now, unfortunately, when people don't realize that, you know, that, I love this room by the way, I love the texture. Um, when people don't realize that this Intel baseline pro, uh, profile, uh, doesn't actually fix it. Hi, there we go. Looks like, it's not activating. Gonna rip him a new one. So here we go. Flood zone. Everyone likes the flood. I think. Ruby. Gonna have some scuba gear as well. Uh, this level, I I remember really crying that I wouldn't have enough ammo on this one. So we'll see how well we do. That's why I get the plane will come get some though. I tell, tell ya. So, uh, this level consists of, uh, these buildings and just massive amounts of, like, you know, water canyon. I wonder if you could do, like, a pro jump again. Oh. Oh. Pro jump. I don't think you're really meant to jump, like, this far, this, like this. Yeah, the, the, the level design isn't, isn't really made for that. And I still landed on one of them. Watch out for sharks. So, yeah. Um... But yeah, I think that accounts for the discrepancies. From there on out, then it's Intel playing damage control because the Intel baseline profiles that people have installed on their computers and Intel doesn't exactly have a fix for is causing this kind of stuff. Now, Intel, in the meantime, has found a problem where the processors are calling more voltage than they actually really need and therefore, you know, degradation, sure, okay. Um, Intel themselves haven't enforced really these uh, defaults very well. Lots of motherboards are just ditching everything. Um, I think there's a, yeah, there's specifically a, a, another bug with um, thermal velocity boost, which should only affect i9s, by the way, because they're the only ones that do use thermal velocity boost. I think, right? What do the guys 7s have it now? When 11th gen came out, which by the way was when, uh, yeah, 11th gen was the first one that had um, thermal velocity boost, and uh, hey, look which gen had the most uh, failures. I'm not sure if it was because of that, though. So, grain of salt. I appreciate this pistol works underwater. I'd be very remiss if it didn't. There's a tiny little hole there. You're never gonna use the pistol any other time. Might as well use it while you've got, uh, easy, easy sponge enemies. How the music's going at it this level. Swim up in the crack and you can finally get out onto these destroyed buildings. Um so yeah, uh so yeah, it, Intel's got multiple bugs that they've needed to be fixing anyways. I don't think they are necessarily the problem. But they add up to the problem. All these bugs are causing bad voltages. Which, coupled with the motherboards are letting insane voltages go through, I think is a recipe for disaster. Basically, everything is stacked against these processes right now. Which is not good for them. It's not good. Um, now, the final layer to why Intel is, you know, 
fairly responsible, I'm not going to say exclusively responsible, but definitely fairly responsible, is that the PR sucks. People are having these issues and they're not owning up to it, they, or rather, they took forever to own up to it. They are caving into media pressure because, you know, Gamers Nexus and other sites like that are going, Hi, yes, we'll never recommend your processes ever again because you don't, you're not, you know, making these people whole. And I 100% agree that, hi, yes, people are being, you know, their parts are not up to spec, they should be getting refunds, or at least replacements that do go to spec. Um, sorry, I'm really wanna, I really wanna nail these dudes. Um, so, Intel should be trying to make this situation good. If that involves doing a lot of refunds, they gotta do it. If this involves, oh my gosh. If this involves, uh, you know, providing better guidance, then they should be doing that. There's lots of things that they can do. Uh, telling people to get bent and it's the motherboard's fault and all that stuff is not entirely wrong. But it is also the, like, you know, that's not what people want. People want to be fixed. People want to be whole. They want to have a part that's working and doing better than AMD. Because people are going to be very upset if the processor that they, uh, you know, thought would be doing alright is not doing as good as they wanted it to. Dude, there's lots of these, oh my gosh, there's lots of these, like, good guys all over the shop. My goodness, she's now got to deal with, a uh, one up there as well. Oh, I thought there was one over here. Let's go. Okay. So this is uh, the ledge from the start of the level. Cool. We can wander around here and get some items and some atomic health. But in particular, we needed to grab the uh, not not the yellow key, the blue key, which uh, I think we need to do a lap around again. This guy fall in the water. Strange sound he made while going in the water. Oh, the shark's respawning on me. So we come back in it. Nope, that's yellow keycard again. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So I think that's the big complicated story. Um, it's still a bit of a mess, and we still don't have an answer to, um, you know, the problems that are happening. We have general guidance you can definitely apply, but. There is no hard and fast rule. There's no, oh, you know, like if you've got a 14th gen or a 13th gen processor, do this. I think the easiest things is one. Okay, here's my rules. One, add, set the power limit, 253 watts. Don't let it exceed that. Two, set the current limit, 380 amps. You can maybe push for a bit more, uh, but generally try to set that low. Uh, three, there's a vid uh, limit setting on various motherboards. Gigabyte's got one with a certain name. Uh, you can set that to 1.4 just so that there are no excursions from that. Um, there's various other uh, settings as well. Um, I think around like, was it Intel excursion protection, current excursion protection. Um, potentially that stuff might help, but I'd probably say those three are just, the current is insane. Like, and the voltage is insane. Try to sort all of that out before, you know, well, before you use the processes for a long time. But I think that you can make them work. I'm not saying, oh, hi there. I'm not saying that, uh, like, if you're the owner of a 13th gen processor, I do not believe it's the end of the world because I genuinely do think that Puget is along the right lines of these parts aren't actually failing at the absurd rates that people are claiming they are. I think they are failing at generally normal rates when you are control for the settings. The problem right now is that these defaults and all the things going on is that little bit that's tipping it over. And it also depends on your use case because some people don't have bursty workloads. For me, FMMPEG is a great test for showing that this ends up being a problem. Um, kind of confusing level, ain't it? And you see what I mean about like running out of ammo? It's like I'm down to the freaking shrink ray. Uh, 
And I love how, like, it's so underwater. And I've run out of my scuba gear, so it's like, okay, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, hi there. It's a bit dark in here, ain't it? Open this door, now I can finally get out and breathe a little bit, and there's sharks again. Which you can indeed shrink the sharks. And finally this red key card is visible here. Crush that shark with my foot. Gosh, it's kind of painful when you don't have a... Uh, anything really. I don't know why some enemies seem to resist this a bit more than others as well. In here as well, you get some steroids, but I think the goal is to get wherever the key card was meant to go and get the heck out of dodge. Jumpy, 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 jump. I'm pretty sure the key card went up here. Hopefully, there's nothing big behind this door. Well, that's the best I can do. And there's tons of rats, apparently. Like that multi-hit right there. Nice. Um, so, anyway, I think that's my take. Uh, again, there's a part of me that's like, man, I was... I feel like I'm on the money. I feel like everything I've been feeling is generally alright. Um, but, yeah, like, we're now, we're now, you know, in the week of the Ryzen 9000 launch after they delayed it by a week for some reason. Um, I assume it wasn't a very major, like, recall, because I, I assume it's like, oh, it's only one week more or two weeks more for some of the processes. Um, fall down the hole. Into some water. Get shot at by turret. And, uh, the level ends. Pretty long level. But, uh, we make it- we make it happen. We make it go. L.A. Rumble. It's- let's get ready- you can't say let's get ready to rumble. That's apparently a copywritten phrase. Good thing I didn't say let's get ready to rumble or else he'd get very mad. Notice there was, like, no pick cops in that level at all. I like this level. There's just something fun to the verticality in it. Big buildings, face on the <laughs> face on the wall like it's a blade runner. Is he gonna drop down on me? I'm just gonna stand on that ledge. I'm gonna get medieval on your asses. Let me just double check because I know that there's a secret exit in this level. Oh no, it's alright, it's the next level. We're good. Man, these guys are raining. Um, but yeah, yeah. Ryzen 9000's out this week. Um, my running theory, again, this is, this is the Blendho technology take. Uh, my running theory guess is that um, the single core will be pretty good. The all core will be a little... Mm, eh, fine, actually. I think it'll be fine. It's just your normal gains. Nothing too spectacular. And maybe for day one pricing, it's going to be a little... But, uh... But I think over time, it'll get better. Look at this guy. Chatting to the lady. Come get some. Come get some. Come get some. There you go. That's, that's what I said. <clears throat> Calendars. Hate them. But... What a weird room. Oh, hi there. Caught me off guard, I tell ya. 
had all my health and suddenly lost it all in the lottery. It's gonna step in the line. Yeah! Dude, you gotta know that they're just gonna spawn behind you, you know? I mean, that crack wall was telegraphed as heck. No way would they not expect it to come up. Well, not not expect, but more just like... Reaching this part of the level at this point. Oh, oh you're just sitting on the ground there. Sorry, man. I didn't see you there. It's a very long, long elevator to go up. I like how it moves you slightly across as well. It's not quite in the right spot. Despite them about to do a room over room. Also, one of these guys in here. Hi there. I think I'll see him on the way down. Uh, but now we're on top of the building. What the heck? Oh, hi. Uh, uh. Take two, take two. Cause he's chilling up there. You got the suicide drones. Casually. Hi there. Got a guy who's chilling in here. He hasn't come out yet. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I don't think the Ryzen 9000s will be absolutely spectacular, but they will definitely be chart toppers and all core for the 16 core right now and the single core is going to be uh, incredibly close if not actually in AMD's favor which means why buy Intel and that is a good question because if you need good single core I think it's going to have to it's going to be for Ryzen it depends on what you're doing because obviously someone's going to find some scenario you know, a bit, bit of perilous platforming why not start your week with a bit of platforming I just want, like, ammo, you know? Like... I'd rather have a drone, like, just strike me. I am gonna have a guy miss on me. It's gonna come in through the window. He came in through the bathroom window. That would have got him. That definitely got him. Like these little office cubicles as well. Very fun. Take out the turrets. Um, so yeah. So why buy Intel? And that that I think is the important take home is whatever whatever your opinions are on this situation. I think we can definitely say as of this week. I don't think. You know, there is any particular reason to buy Intel. The single core, the old core, the, you know, I guess the energy efficiency, which I don't think is in Intel's core. There's just so many things where it's like, oh, I don't think they have it right now. Now, this may and uh, I'm hoping probably will change uh, when uh, um, Arrow Lake comes out uh, October, maybe? October's the, the prospective time I'm seeing. Um, but again, if Intel doesn't make people whole, and they don't uh, acknowledge this in you know the best way possible, and uh, you know remediate anyone who's having these problems, dude, you could you could spot what's happening here. Oh, the room of rooms panicking there. Because yeah, now you're over here. I mean, we've got two key cards. We could just head outside, right? Can't deal with them. Can't deal with them. They're over there. Um, I think given that they gave you a jetpack, I think it's actually in your best interest to just go down. Who am I shooting at? Leave 
awesome jetpack for the rest of us though. Like I like how there is this ledge here so you can get a bit of a bit of bonus goodies. It puts you back up on this ledge as well. Are these the guys from up there and they fell off or I don't remember there being this many guys just then. Still though, lots of ammo. I am thankful for right now. <laughs> Alright, to the floor, to the ground. Where's where's the pigs? I'm hearing them. There's one. Come on, man, that's the start of the level. So yeah. That's the long story. That's the that's the whole whole thing. Oh hi there. That's the whole thing. I hope that it's just it's all uphill from here. Cheap viewers. Oh my goodness. Wow. I've always wanted a cheap viewer. Now I have one. Wow. I, I'll, I'll never know why. So hold on. I grabbed the blue key card just to come up in here, and then I proceeded to walk into walk into death. Still getting sniped by that guy. Okay. So where where does the red key card go? <clears throat> Not necessarily up there, is it? No. Hold on, so we're up here. Get the jumps. Might as well just come up here just to get there again. Whoop. Don't re remember the red keycard door being over there. Maybe it was up here. Was the red keycard door? <laughs> Did we see that already? Oh no. We do have this, which opens the room that I. Th I ah, okay. I was like, that obviously looked like it was gonna open up in some way. Through the portal and, uh,. Well, we can we can leave via this uh, this heli chopper, so let's press the button and away we go. Yeah, just got bit by Muzzy, ah, Muzzy. So that's, right. that's it. That's the whole intel thing. Hopefully, I never have to talk about him again. <laughs> Movie set. Well, out of the helicopter we go. like two tickets to see uh twisters thank you that's how you know when i when i film this when i'm talking about twisters i haven't even seen the movie i'm sorry maybe one day so to go back to duke nukem for a hot second i i love the flow of things it's very kind of stop starty but like None of the enemies are that bulky, although the big dudes are kind of annoying every time they show up, I'll tell you that. Um, but what what the charm of the game is, is its levels. It lives and dies by its level design. And when it works, it's great, and when it doesn't work, it's like, hey, you know, like... Eh. <laughs> but certainly, I think the level designers have to put in a lot more high there. I'm trying to take out this one thing right in front of my face, and you're like, nah. I want to jump in front of you. There it is. I was like, he's, he's priming to do that again. But there is also something fun to just like, you know, every level kind of has that like somewhat, like I don't want to say realistic because the levels are still got that, you know, 
that mid 90s abstract design to them but there's a lot more like this is a stage it's got signs that are just made for this one level they're not just you know copy pasting the same kind of abstract layers and plates pasting them all over each other this is definitely hey we need a level that's like this can we get some artists to design some art for that and i guess that's something where it's like a lot of shooters were very abstract in the past Re uh, not saying all of them but you know, like, Rise of the Triad is a very abstract game, and it's like, I don't know if they just kind of had ideas and then designed the levels sort of at the last moment once they had the flow of the whole game, whereas this was one where I think they had the idea of how to control the troop early on and then sort of just made it all work out with these rather real scenarios. Like the moon landing. Right here. I love the uh, director's chair and all that jazz over here as well. Hail to the king. Hail baby. to the king. Oh, hi there. These enemies keep just respawning right where the start of the level was. Nice. No one saw that, right? Yeah. <laughs> what a man. <laughs> no one saw that. You can see a helicopter crash and also all the pig cops in the wreckage. Am I hearing another one? I feel like I'm hearing one right here. Hang on. Yeah, piece of cake. Where is it? There you go. I was like, totally there's a secret in his face here. And what do you know? Another dude on the outside to greet me. Very, very nice. Well, we can use this yellow keycard on the yellow keycard door where we will be greeted by enemies I prefer to keep my health See you in hell. Eh. That's got I love just how many like random parts of the wall can also get blown up even when they don't have an indicator it's just like hey you know like if you were shooting explosive rounds around this time hey there you go you got something grab this red key card that's just wedged in there Just an air duct, you know, like... I don't know, there's something fun about it all. And uh, the best Duke Nukem levels, I think, you know, harbor on that fact. They know that the, you know, there's fun stuff to be found when the level design is all wacky and stuff. And, uh... Is there a big guy out here? Yes. Let's get him. go. So now we should be able to- yeah, we can leave fire here. Now, there is a secret exit in this level. This one actually has it, so let's see if we can do a brief look around to find it. Nice, by the way. Nice. I'm glad I just saved over that. Well, uh, good thing uh, no clip still works. No one saw that. No one saw that. <clears throat> That's why they're episodes, I guess. Where would one hide a secret exit in a level like this? The spaceship feels right. <clears throat> oh, I can obviously just keep it open, give it a look. Uh, where is the secret exit? Where is the secret exit? On the movie set with the lunar landscape walk towards what appears to be a model of the space shuttle. It was on the... It was on the, um, the, the lunar set. Whoa. Wherever the lunar set is. Walk towards the model of the space rocket. I remember I said it's like, oh, you know, they're making like, you know, fairly unique art assets that don't like loop around. And then it's like, oh, okay. What is the model of the space rocket? I do like this though. Very nice. I mean, I guess that's the space rocket, is it not? Where is it? 
What happens? Press the USA sign, and the shuttle will come down. Press the USA sign. This sign? Ah! You could probably hit this very soon, so... Well, let's go into it, shall we? Let's rock. Everyone likes a good secret level, so... Tear drops. Very nice. Got some health behind us. Oh, am I am I in for a treat? Which one is this one? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay, we got some other fancy room over room kind of stuff going on here. So, how does this level work? There are four decks. Each deck has a different room in the center of the map. We gotta watch out because there's babes in the center that are 100% gonna get hit by these. Yeah, there he is. I had all this health at the end of the last level, and now they're like, yep, no. You're gonna take the hits. Damn it. Man, that's just cruel. That's just cruel having all these guys spawn in on that. How about let's, uh, just let him, let him exist for a moment. Try and get them first. Before they blow up any babes. Oh. Ah, nah. Oh. Not, not a quit. We are not quitting. We're just, we're just a retryer, not a quitter. Come on, come on, we can get this. Take out the pickups, take out, take out the pickups. Okay. And we'll dance around a little bit. This guy, <laughs> that guy was, uh, cheesing his way through, so... Stuck there, isn't he? Hate these goopy boys, but they're relatively harmless on their own right here, I guess. Now, every single one of these rooms also has uh, a little hole coming out of the ceiling, and uh, three little holes there around the outside. Um, all of these just drop into the other chambers, and you can also find some bonuses around the outside, so this one, again, feels a bit like a deathmatch map. But it's something kind of fun and charming to it. And of course, wacky level design is always warranted. The way it's implemented is just like... Very curious to explain, but uh, yeah, good old compiling your maps for non-Euclidean scenarios is uh, just like, oh, yeah. well, not compiling, because build engine maps are not compiled. Fun fact. <laughs> what a mess. So let's head around the outside once more for the third room. Gotta watch out. There's lava here. Not a lot of free space to take out these guys without them coming a bit too close. There you go. Uh, oh. So the the other topic I wanted to get onto today is that there's a lovely. I'm curious what's in here. Hey, you gotta have one of them. 
Very nice. Cool. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, video uh, from a person called Poltfan69 about uh, the short, but it's 17 minutes, rant on localization from one of my live streams. A viewer <laughs> recommended I upload it, uh, and I think it's a pretty good introduction to my general philosophy around localization, translation, and political language. TLDW, don't see language leftists. Now, we're already bringing up some politics, but um, the localization discourse, I've brought up a couple of times, and uh, I'm not 100% sure where my stance lies when it comes to it, because on the one hand, I do want, like, translation to be faithful. I think that's a key... Key term. Okay, you're right. uh, I do want translation to be faithful. I don't want, like, trans- or rather, I, I guess localization is probably the real term of- You can't make everything word for word the exact same what it says in the Japanese. Because- and this video is great at explaining it. It's because it makes- you know, you, you want someone to have the same experience as someone as someone in a different language. You want it to basically be indistinguishable that someone played the game in Japanese and someone played the game in English, as long as they all take home the same impression of the game and, you know, the same impression of the characters and so on. Well, let's buzz our way out of this level as well. Oh yeah, this mozzie's definitely been going to town. I mean, eh. Ah. Gonna rip him a new Gonna one. Rip him a new one. Rabid transit. That's right. That's where the train was meant to end at this level. I like how each level sort of leans into the next one a little bit as well. I love these as well. This level is fun and wacky. I like it. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Come get you. Lots of trip mines all over the shop. Plenty of shotgun ammo, so let's use it. Beep. Pipe bombs in the in the vending machine, you know, nice. Oh, oh my gosh, what the heck? I've got these uh wonderful trip mines here, which is weird because it's like you're like, uh, can't you just throw a pipe bomb and be done with it? Is like, yeah, kind of. I'm not really too sure why they blocked your way when you can just do that. Can I? Oh, I was gonna say. Oh, I was thinking, looks like, is that the first level's music again? It is very kind of downplayed. I think it's nice and fun and dramatic, but it is very, you know. 90s MIDI. This is a scenario to put yourself out, out at. I love this train bit. It's good fun. Because unlike the... Oh. Unlike the other one where uh, it was all, you know, fenced off and all that jazz. This is a... A real train. It rides around. You can shoot things. So if I had the blue key card, that'd be cool. Uh, one thing you can do, the floor is electric. You'll see that, uh... It's not electric. But it's not that the floor is electric, it's that there's a train running around. Or rather, there's... You know, yeah. <laughs> there's a train running around. Uh, I could probably use the jetpack to jump up there. Actually... Well, it'd be better if I didn't die, you know? Alright, let's get it. Let's get out of here, quick! Quick! Ah. Ah. Now we can use this to jump into the actual parts. The way it was intended. Let's see, got a little... Heidi Hole here. You know, if you want that Heidi Hole. Okay. And jump in. Which has the keycard, which we can now either back up into or nope. 
So I'm back up into. Let's, let's just do the lap. It's a pretty straightforward level, but... <laughs> yeah. Um... So, uh... So, it, yeah, okay, so in particular, he uses the term localization to mean, like, you know, taking something that, yeah, basically making something work in another language. And that is kind of the, uh, you know, the whole crux is you're making this source material work in that language. But you are still making something for that intended use case. What am I? Oh. Very nice. Um, you're still working with an original source text and you want to be as like fairly true to that text as you can Wow Wowie Wowie what a what a what a moment I right, got some monster infighting going on. I just triggered it, right? No, he's just fighting me. Stop it! What the heck? What did I ever do to this guy? Whoops. Terrible place to rest your weary bones. Alright, let's just... place to be fighting this guy, I tell ya. I'm gonna deal with his mate around the corner. Probably lure him out of here if I wanted to. Oh! He's on the train! He is on the train! Ladies and gentlemen, he is on the train. me. Ladies and gentlemen, he has gone past the train. I can now drink, drink my sorrows. Yes, I am stingy and I don't want to use my health back. Yes, he is probably just going to like come around the corner again when the train comes back. Let's grab the key card and get the heck out of Dodge, shall we? Oh, where is he? Come get some. He's gone. I still hear him. Oh, what? Oh, he's in the wall. Doesn't matter, man. Just get out of here quick. Room in the s oh, another one. Another one. Where am I getting hit? Am I? It's a bit of a gutsy angle, ain't it? Ah, dude, these guys, I tell ya. Seriously, I'm on like full health and then it's like, yep, nope. You're gonna completely pop it from this guy. I really wanna shrink him, man. That was just get it all over and done with. Absolutely gripping. This 
guy really wants me to suck it down, doesn't he? this wonderfully large open hole that just leads back outside, you know? In case. In case you ever want to go back out there. Um, so, okay, so, uh, Polt's other point he also made was a lot of people on the internet are kind of bad faith actors. Uh, not all people, but certainly there's been this terrible push to redefine localization as stuff that it never used to be. And he claims it always used to be making the original source text work as purely as you can to the original creator's intention. That does not necessarily mean word for word literal translation because, and then he brings up some good examples of, um, there's a, there's a phrase that's like hello high water in English. And in the Japanese, there's a similar phrase which translates directly to when arrows fall or when spears fall or something like that. Um, good old Fahrenheit. A measurement system I do not use. I'm sorry, Mr. Fahrenheit. He is traveling at the speed of light, though. Get out of this heat. There we go. We're out of there. I think he meant to push this... What level are we up to? Is this seven? I think it is seven. Yeah. We're nearly done with regular old Duke Nukem 3D, but don't worry, I'll if I've got some time, I'll take a crack at the first few levels of the um the fourth episode in the stream. And then uh Hey, if, time, if time's making that good, then we could do uh, the fifth episode, the 20th anniversary levels, uh, in the third stream, and then I'll do each of the expansions as, like, one separate stream each. I think that'll make sense. Dude, this music's a vibe, though, I tell you. I was like, eh, you know, it's kind of midi chip tune, whatever. But then I'm like, yeah, no, I'm digging it. Who wants some? Okay, where am I going? Because I keep meandering around. We wandered in here. I don't have the right key card. So then we sink down and I go back up to the surface. We have that up there, and I'm actively trying to not use the jetpack because I know I can. Uh, we've got this down here. There we go. Room over room it throws me off, I tell ya. Everyone's favorite enemies. Back from the dead. Um so so. Holt makes a, a, a good point at the beginning to basically be like, first of all, yeah, don't concede the language. Like, you don't don't let them gaslight into it, or don't let people on the internet try and gaslight into thinking that this term never used to mean that, because it did. Um, once you then make it clear that what you want is, you know, a clear, honest translation, and one that doesn't involve, you know, or like change the intention, um, really, then you get into, you know, just the act of translating. There are certain things where it's like you can translate them one way, you know, maybe there's some differences here and there. It's the translator's job to try and do as good a job as possible there. But they're paid to do that. I love how I'm just like plane firing into that. They're paid to do a good job like this. And uh, I think there's a lot of... He made a comment about, uh, was it the rubber dub dub line in one, uh, what was it? It might have been Unicorn Overlord uh, recently. And it's like, I mean, it's okay, but, well, not okay. It's like, it's literally not what the Japanese was indicating at all. Um, and elongating the, the phrases to, like, give it some kind of impression that wasn't there to begin with is definitely a, um, you know, he's like, yeah, no, nah, that's a no-no. Um, there's also some other ones where he was like, um, there's a, there's one... I love this fireman's pole, by the way. Uh, there was one where, um, uh, there was a phrase, uh, like, first, first, first come, first, first mover wins, basically, which, an English idiom would be, the early bird gets the worm. But in the Japanese, there's no mention of bird, and it's a lengthier phrase, to basically, like, try and mean the same thing. 
So the better intention would be to try and create, you know, a phrase that is short and delivers the same kind of succinctness and, and, and effect. So when the translation, in this case, says, uh, I'm hearing enemies, like, teleport or whatever. I jumped over to the other side of here. Just gonna, just gonna casually clear the room before it all goes to chaos. Oh, hi there. Because I'm hearing, like, oh, let's turn on the night vision. It really doesn't help in this wall, does it? Back out here, okay. So I was gonna say, we got like. He's up the wazoo. Everyone's everywhere. Eh. Eh. Damn, gonna watch out for these drones, I'll tell ya. Um. So, uh, so the the actual translation that was used in the work was uh, the early griffin gets the worm, and you can maybe make the case of like, okay, well, bird griffin, like, hey, similar English reader will get it, but now you've added like, you know, kind of like a wholesome kind of joke when the original was just a very very matter of fact statement. It's there was no joke to be had at the beginning there, and now there is. You've now added you know, some kind of character trait, maybe a, a meaning to that sentence that wasn't there originally. And that is the danger of not localization, but more just like, that is the danger of when localization goes too far, when you change the meaning so heavily that you've now just created something for your target market and you're not actually like, you know, translating. You're just adding in stuff that feels like, oh, the character says it, I guess. Um, so obviously it's a balancing act. It's like you do need to change some things here and there or change being adapt. You need to make something work given the original intention. I love how the secret place has the red key card. It's like, oh, okay. The moon landing was fake. We found that out from a previous level. Okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Secret places everywhere. Uh, where are we going? Okay, so I got that. Got the red key card out the door. Rooftop, yes. Oh, that's a good sound. I don't know where these guys are chilling right now. Oh. That's gonna be fun. Uh. Uh. There we go. Him out. Uh. So, I, it's a good video. I would recommend giving it a watch. His Twitter account is PulseFan69. Very nice. Um, but the clip was pretty good. I have not watched a stream of his um, in its uh, entirety, but I think that this is a a pretty good video and just kind of summarizing someone's opinions. He's got some, you know, some evidence to back it up. He's got some, you know, I can respect his takes. Now, I'm always on the fence because on the one hand, Dragon Quest is always a subject of like, it, it is very different to the original, yet I enjoy the translation um, or mm, hard localization. Like it's a pretty aggressive localization. It's, it's like so far removed dialogue wise from the original. Um, I'm not saying it's like Ghost Stories level of literal, we don't care, but it's a uh, yeah, pretty gnarly. Uh, oh gosh, where did this red keycard go? I thought I saw like the red keycard going in here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Ugh. That is actually ending on top, I'm pretty sure it does. What the? I think we 
We're good. Not good. <laughs> you know what I need to do? I need to have the, the fake you. Apparently they figured out real quick the fake two. Oh no. Back. Can that work? No. Close the door on me. What a monster closet of an ending to the level, I tell ya. Come get some. What a bizarre ending to that level. Was there an alternative way I could have gone? I don't think so. I think that was actually it. They've done keys and secrets before. Alright, we are nearly there. We have three levels left. And then we're done. Hotel well. Hell is a well. Where is the well? Who knows? Um... Yeah. Last one I want to add is, uh, yeah, the, I, I mentioned Intel's stock price, or... Briefly, uh, that. There was a tweet from, uh, Pat Gelsinger about, uh, uh <laughs> yesterday, which was, uh, basically him writing a proverb. And someone's like, hi, I'm new to the stock market, is it a good thing when the Intel CEO starts praying? And I'm like, yep, yep, this is a, this is a wacky scenario, so, uh, yeah, stock markets, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a stock expert, actually, I'm not even, I'm not a stock participant, let alone an expert. I got, I got no, like, way to give anyone advice on stocks. Number go up, that means you're doing good, but a part of me is also, like, I'd prefer to invest in the companies that are, like, making stuff that I think I care about. I find it's kind of hard to, like, just invest in stocks and things that, like, I don't know, man. I don't know what some of these companies do. <laughs> um, but in general, no, the stock market has absolutely plummeted. Um, and it's probably for a lot of reasons. Uh, there's a big economic recession that's effectively happening, but uh, no one wants to admit that it's happening, despite the fact that your food has gotten very expensive and the GDP growth has uh, slowed to a crawl, if not actually, you know, maybe going negative. The amount of product per capita is actually going down in some countries, um, which is a sign of an actual uh, recession as opposed to a, or sorry, a depression rather than a, a typical recession. Um, yeah, I'm not an e economic, uh, what's the term, no, no, all I, I do not know what's going on in the world, but certainly, uh, this is my sign to you, if you, oh my gosh, hi there, if you, uh, have stocks in things, uh, just a heads up, um, stock prices are currently going uh, a bit wacky right now, so be safe with your stock prices. Even crypto is going a bit wacky. Some are down like 20%. Oh, I was, I was like, oh my gosh, he's chasing me around these corners a bit. Oh, hi there. Where'd you come from? Oh, I thought it was a mirror. I was like, oh my gosh. Look at all these doors and extra, like, little areas to just keep opening up. Now, what's going on here? I, for reference, I do not remember a lot of these, like, end level 3 levels. And to be fair, I don't know how much of episode 4 I'm sorry, episode 4. 
I don't know how much of episode 4 I remember as well. Chuck it in there. That's a good sound. Ow. That wasn't nice. And then he's just he's just bailing. He's he's going all over the place. I like how that counts as an enemy spawn, by the way. The <laughs> big cop crashing off his crashing off his ship. Yes, very much. These count as enemy spawns as well. How fun. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize we're at the beginning of the level again. Kind of looks like there's something in there, but... Not sure quite how you get in there, but... I didn't even pick up a keycard as well. After being out here. Why? Where? Where's the keycard hiding? Let's see, we have this whole outdoor area, and I was in here, and that was literally it. I was like, it's gotta be a key card in there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, keep safe, people. I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of unrest in the world, and, uh, certainly a lot of, uh, you know, I guess, uh, what's the term? Withheld anger. A lot of people are upset about, you know, the, the world they're in. I, personally, I, like, I know there's lots of reasons people are upset. I'm so glad I'm trapped in this corner here. Uh, I personally am uh, fairly upset that uh, housing rates and all that jazz are so insane in uh, the Sydney area. I'm like, I'm trying to get a house. And it's just like, yep. As someone who doesn't have a... <laughs> doesn't have a, uh, you know, a uh, dependent... Or, sorry, doesn't, doesn't have a, uh, a secondary income in the house. Um, it's definitely one where- oh my goodness, oh my goodness, so many enemies. I have one of these, which I wasted just then. <sighs> Man, if only there was a faster shooting weapon. Single file, single file, single file. Okay, oh, no, wait, now we're good. We're clear for a moment. Listen, I prefer this than the suicide drones very often, but... But, like, man, you know, you hear the big guy and you're like, oh, what? What? Hello? What is going on in this room, man? <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I, like, the housing is certainly insane uh, for me. It's like, yeah, if I want to get a loan, it's like, you know, the, the interest rates are like, oh, like, six point something percent per annum, but the, the amount you need to loan, you gotta loan that for such a long amount of time. Like, I wouldn't mind if it's like, oh, six percent, but I can pay it in three years. When it's, I have to spend, like, fifteen years, I've effectively gotta make two and a half times the amount I actually really needed in the end. Just to make that work. Which is like, man, that really hurts. So, is there anything in here other than kind of brain-looking... Just a curious little little hideaway, I guess. Lots of health bottles, you know, you know, in the bar. Oh, yep, there he is. Hey, that's my bar. Well, it's not my bar. I hate the minigun, it's just like, 
kind of annoying. It gives me just spider mastermind vibes. Where is it? Here are all these guys over there. Diving board. There's a bunch of dudes. And then me taking taking a fun hit. Bit of a bit of a noisy hit, but I did kill all of them with one or two two uh pipe bombs, so that's all good. Uh swimming through our empty area and uh we are at the atomic caliper. Ah! Oh, we're here in the bathroom. Why am I here in the bathroom? That is a good question. I think that's just a wraparound kind of scenario. Well, a lot of dudes seem to spawn at the beginning of the level again. What's going on back here? There's nothing going on back here, right? Unless you hit a secret in the doorway, but... No, I think it's all normal. We do have a secret level to try and look for as well, so keep your eyes peeled. Where are all these enemies back? Oh, hi there. Again. Yeah, where were all these guys? Because now we're back up here. I'm just wandering through this area backwards. Was there, like... I mean, it's not like a key card, because I haven't done the key card yet. Oh, hi there. Bit of a dim corridor. Everyone likes a good stairwell section. Just to make your way into the same area, instead of up a long lift. And then we're up here, and this is the balcony area, okay. We had the water section, this went down into basically the toilet room. Um, level design, level design, where would you put something? I was thinking it's like, yeah. Obviously. So where is the regular exit? Because I'm thinking like, everyone likes a good waterfall secret. Where's the regular exit? Where's the- where is that hiding? Where is it? Yeah, where is it? Where is it? Is a fire extinguisher single suspect. Well, that just opens out into the street. But you do get, uh, these. Very nice to snag these. Um... <clears throat> exit. Oh. No, wait, no, that's just the stairwell. Back down. I feel like the fight around here definitely should signal that there's an end of the level here? Why am I struggling so hard to find... Because I didn't grab a key or anything. And that's just another ledge over there. Where is it? Where is it? Ah. Uh... Going back to the beginning of the level, just for a hot second. Bathroom. Blue door, which is where Come I started the level. Ooh. I don't see there being really anything in particular. Where is the end of the level meant to be? You know it's good when you can find the secret exit fairly easily, but then it's just like, yep. Regular exit. Because I would love to know. I would love to just go, Oh yeah, regular exit's there. There you go. Ah. Where is it? I'm going nuts. I'm going nuts trying to find this. I had this room, which just had a secret health and this weird aquarium view of, uh, there. Um... Would make sense if there's maybe something. Was this it? Was this all there was to it? 
I just didn't stand on the ledge right. And then you come your way over here and there'll be a... End of the level. Wow. Very cool. Okay. To the secret exit. To the secret exit. Back here. There we go. Hotel Hell. Done. Rockin'. Rockin'. Take me to the freeway. Everyone likes a big explosion. This level, I believe, is actually, like, shown off in the, um, if you play the, uh, not the, like, the original DOS version, or at maybe a, a later DOS version, actually has a demo playing as the, the back of the, the main screen. Kind of like Doom as a, a demo going until you pause it. And, um, for some reason, the demo for Duke Nukem 3D is of this level. It's like, this is the secret level right before the final boss level. Pretty sure they don't take it on this level, really, though. But it is a fun, like, level aesthetically, where it's like, even though it doesn't, you know, go down a freeway, pop, pop, you can forever level. I should play- Oh, dude, at some point, I would love to play through the, um, the Duke Nukem Forever D-Make. Someone made a, a Duke Nukem 3D D-Make of what they wanted Duke Nukem Forever to be. Um, because that's always a- that's always a fun story. Duke Nukem Forever literally taking forever. They announced it in 1998, and it came out in 2011 after 3D Realms going through a, a huge, uh... Well, I guess liquidation, basically. They're just running out of money. Because they didn't market Prey 2006 properly. Come get some. But I love how, like, how much is going on in these levels, even though it's like, yeah, you know, it's buildings and stuff all crumbling and stuff like that. It all works. It's like... It's this fun element of destruction and all that jazz. I love how you can run up that building as well. Obviously, that's a little underpass for, for the same bridge section. Get your first aid over there. Who wants some? Hail to the king, baby. Well, it's good fun. I, I do. I really enjoy this game, and I know it's like it's Duke Nukem 3D. Like, what can you say that hasn't exactly been said already? And uh, I guess the short answer is not much, but. It's certainly like, yeah, it it just feels like a very monumental title in regards to like, not much was like it. You know, I, I, until until there were multiple build engine titles and suddenly then there was lots like it, but... But I think there's something charming about like, what Quake was trying to achieve at the time, what other first-person shooters were trying to achieve at the time, and what this did. I think maybe Star Wars Dark Forces is probably the closest you'd get. And even then. It's like, oh look, a turn-up police car that uh, deals damage when I jump near it. <laughs> because being mean with explosives is uh, how they do it. I actually really like Shadow Warriors level design, and we might get to that at some point, but... Hi there, killer drone thing. I believe this would just drop down to the street below. Oh no, to the sewer. Even worse. Ooh. Let's find my way back home. There we go. Um. But uh, but yeah, interest rates. What a, what a. Weird thing for me to kind of segue from, but, uh... Groovy. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. The world's a bit chaotic. At least we're all in the same boat. It's all good. 
Alright, I think we need to run up this building. We're running up that hill. Oh, that's where they're all hiding. That's where they're all hiding. Just chilling back there, hold on. Ugh. Oh, hi. <laughs> what a mess. There we go. Dude, I hate him. I hate him so much. There's probably more up there. Oh no, we got them all. So run up the building and uh, you can easily jump into the side building. There's a lot of, like, the level design is kind of wacky as well. Like, just when you think about it, it's like, man, that's a curious way of going about the intended flow of the level. Just you know, run up this building on the side and... Such a good sound to have right there. I need to turn off the lights. <clears throat> Should I be concerned about what's in here? It is a secret place, that is true. We did have chain gun cannon. Very nice. Uh, okay, oh, out the window. Uh, got some devastator. Oh, there's two of them, what? When did you get a friend? When did you get a friend? Oh. There we go. Scan the keycard. Take the bat lift. Oh. Everyone likes a good conveyor belt section. Why are there conveyor belts up here? I don't know why. Maybe it's the, you know, the Los Angeles factory. The Los Angeles dinosaur. Some guy just disappear on me. I thought he... Let's just turn him off. No, it turns off the light. What about this one? There you go. Deactivated. There you go. They even had to tell you the message. Terminated. Nice. Did we get... Nice. So I got hit by a green. I got hit by a green. Hit him with a green. Oh my goodness. Let's try and squish them all. Get him? I think we did. Oh. Who was shooting me from in there? What the Where? Where is this guy? Where is he coming from? <laughs> I do not know where where these shots are coming from. Is he just in the wall? Cause I swear there was like another one around here where I was dealing with, but oh well. Uh, oh, there's atomic health over there as well. Time to hover. Meow. Okay, so now I believe the red was just over here, right? Who wants some? Um... We're probably gonna deal with a big guy. Or just some big cops. To the king, baby. Um, where is it? Fire every time. <laughs> There we go. End of the secret level, and that's the end of the final secret level of the main game. Although, of course, we've got uh, our fourth episode coming up. But now at the moment, we still have one last level of Duke Nukem 3D. The stadium. This is a iconic, just, you know, end of the game kind of level. Cut the cheerleaders. And you got your big guy, as well as also a handful of other guys just to be mean. Not too bad, but they are going to deal some damage from time to time. Also, you're going to have your babes kind of be in the the, the fire zone here. Oh, and I ran out of rockets. I do have pipe bombs. Eh. That secret level probably put me uh, 
more at a disadvantage. Well, let's pick up all this other ammo and see how we do. Oh, I mean, he shouldn't hit you with really anything that bad. Like you stand, you stand still for the most part. I will say one thing, the items are generally like, hey, a bit wacky, but sometimes a little bit useless. And here we are, the actual ending of the game. So iconic. So good. Woo! That's a spectacular ending. Duke Nukem. After a few days of r and R, I'll be ready for more action. Come back to bed, do. I'm ready for some action. No. Mm. No. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Mm. oh, this is a great thing to have on stream. <laughs> They're playing Mario Kart. They're having a great time. And there we go. That's, yeah, that's the end of Duke Nukem 3D. Um, let's do two levels. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Alright, let's start two levels of the birth. Come get and then, uh, yeah, let's try and do next stream. Duke, we've got a new problem here. <laughs> this video was shot by an undercover operative. Oh, am I meant to show this on stream? Oh, it's a progogacy. It's a low poly progogacy. I'm going in. I'm going in. Pay for my vacation. There you go. So, uh, let's, uh, there you go. I love the Mission Impossible kind of kicking in. There's no other songs in 5-4, five, five, you know? It's got a little handprint on the wall, which uh, reveals a wonderful cave here. With some night vision goggles, which is very necessary apparently, because I can't see anything. This level's kind of annoying, because it just starts with a bunch of these turrets. Like, I just run past them. I can't, I can't deal with the turrets with just the pistol. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this fourth episode was released, uh, after the fact, sort of as, like, a special edition. Well, actually, no, you had to kind of pay for it, didn't you? Oh, the bit too close to the wall on that one. That one's fine, but the other one, oh, a bit too close. Um, most of the levels... Oh. Most of the levels were, um, uh, kind of created, uh, by people at... Well, after the actually, sorry, I believe most of the levels were actually level scrap ideas, where they sort of went like, oh, well, would it be cool if there was a level in, like, a military base? And that's what this level, you know, starts off being. It's like, oh, it's a military base level. In turn, I think the, they're a little bit more disconnected. But there's also some things where, like, knowing how to make Duke Nukem 3D levels, they sort of, you know, took some cues and hints and made something a bit more, uh, a bit more involved. Um, unlike, uh, Ultimate Doom, the fourth episode also does contain, uh, some new enemies, which we'll eventually see. Um, as well as also way too many decals that are too close to the wall. I'd really like a slightly faster weapon to take out enemies as well, because, uh, this is kind of absurd. Oh boy. Really not fair to go pistol only against most of these dudes, I tell ya. There must be a better way. Well, that's fun. Uh, trip mines, which is not quite what I wanted, but sure. Is he just in the box and just blew up in the box? From Wars of the World Pop Prop Department. Very nice. Okay, well, I have 30 health, but I've still got some armor, so...
Needs a, another good bathroom section as well. Yeah, no, this game... Uh, so, okay, so the other thing as well, uh, there's some people who are hired by 3D Realms after the release of Duke Nukem 3D um, to specifically work on and finish up these levels. Uh, one of which is uh, everyone's favorite, Randy Pitchford, who eventually left and founded a company called Gearbox Software, uh, which uh, famously then rebought the Duke Nukem 3D or Duke Nukem license, and then we all know the story of that. Um, also, Borderlands. That one's a fun one. I still, I still love it. It's like they got sued by <laughs> Sega for taking the money meant for Aliens Colonial Marines and just using it to make Borderlands, and then they made a bajillion dollars and proceeded to then not invest that money into making Aliens Colonial Marines a good affair. I'm of the opinion I don't think Gearbox has particularly made a lot of good stuff since Opposing Force. Um, definitely a bunch of the levels were developed uh, by a, uh, an individual called Level Lord. He made a lot of the levels of the regular Duke of 3D. Um, but uh, he was never officially credited for these levels. Um, he claims he worked on a lot of them, but we'll see. I love this, again, just like a little tiny thing in the sink. That's well also what on earth is happening here. Oh, hug against the wall, let's get out of here. See the shadow on the ceiling is a little weird. There we go. What am I looking at here? Is that a very odd? We got the freeze thrower. Everyone's favorite weapon that I proceed to not use a ton. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just kind of slow. Let's head in here where we've got Computer terminal turns that off. Secret place. That's right, the Shrinkinator. Already. Wow. Also, I love the eyeball suit. Uh, okay, so we're wandering around. We're trying to find an exit to the level. Oh, hi there. Let's proceed to shoot the wall a bunch. Do you know the secret? Okay. A bit more straightforward than I expected. They sort of stopped doing secret codes after episode one, didn't they? I wonder why. I'm actually not sure if Duke Nukem 3D was one of those examples where they worked on the shareware episode and released it before they actually had the finished product ready. Because that's another thing as well. Sometimes... Uh... Sometimes the shareware release is sort of like an early access, which is kind of curious because these days it's like, oh, it's such a, how could you? But, oh, yeah, there were a bunch of games that did that. I'm not sure if all of them, I'm not sure if uh, Duke Nukem was one or, but we'll see. Picture of George Washington, that's how you know who's in charge. Was that John Adams, Abraham Lincoln? Uh, Florida. Okay, so I've got a red key card. Now we just need to figure out where the red key card goes. There's still a bunch of enemies just chilling out there. Uh, wandered around here. We've gone through there. Maybe it's back at the start. I know I keep seeing this wall, but I'm pretty sure that's just like... Eh, a little bit of health. Anyway, this leads down into the... Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Come get some. I don't like jump... Oh my gosh. Actual Mission Impossible moment. Okay, <laughs> sure. How much health was I on? I mean, well, the level's called It's Impossible. The, the music... They know what they're doing. Very nice as well. It's 
a bit of a cruel ending, ain't it? I'm just one guy. I'm just one guy. Hi, I'd like to get out of this. Oh. Say, oh, I thought we were gonna have a get smart moment. Nice. Hope you appreciate that one. Just bounce off his head. Bounce off his head. Well, why would you? Running out of bullets, oh my gosh. Oh, they did do the get smart doors. Heck yeah. Love this little rat up to the side here as well. of that. Oh, hi there. Come get some. Look at that, nearly all the weapons on just the first level. Ah, oh well. Back to the Get Smart Doors. Here's a new enemy, which, uh, is kind of annoying. Uh, he doesn't, like, he doesn't take a bunch of hits, but he's got three things that are annoying. One, it's kind of more than the other enemies. Two, uh, he's fast. And three, that's acid blood. If you stand in it, you start taking some damage. It's just kind of annoying. And there's another one. I think they're melee only. That's your one saving grace. At the very least, they're like cacodemons. They can be stun locked to oblivion, I tell ya. So, we'll see more of those uh, throughout the episode. Let's do one more level for the stream. Here we go. Rockin'. Rockin'. Everyone's favorite level, Duke Burger. This level is insane. So. Oop. Sorry about that. <laughs> This level is insane. Uh, what are we doing? Grand opening next week. Oh, I think I remember. That's a term. Running out of ammo. That's my favorite term. I'm so like flabbergasted today. I tell ya. I just need some good rest. I tell ya. Which is why I'm continuing to play this game and just shouting at the top of my lungs. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you know, like. I, because I've got mates at work and it's like, they pull like such long, long, like, nights. They're like, oh my gosh. They are crazy hard workers. Um, okay, we've got all these dudes flying around. And I'm really kind of relying on just the pistol now. Well, I've got some distance. Which will allow me to gain a little bit more shotgun ammo for when I really, really need it. Oh, he's in, he's in the ball pit. that like such a temperamental thing to land in there. Yeah, there you go. Come get some. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, sure, yeah. 
Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get, we'll get there. We'll get to the, to the other meat and joy of uh, this episode as well. Dang it. Look at that up there. Maybe if I could do a bit of platforming, I could grab that. Yeah. What's all the wacky platforming going on? Oh, check it out. There's an enemy. Whoa. There's an enemy over there. It's like a tank, but he's got a button on his back. If you can circle around and press the use button, it blows up. Now, if you didn't know that, and you, and you played this episode, uh, good luck. Real good luck, because they do take quite a lot of damage. And they got miniguns. But, uh, put in the effort, just try and dive in. It'll work out in the end. Again, see? He's gone for you, he's gone for you. Try and circle strafe. You're good, you're good. What a very wacky enemy though, I'll tell you that. Okay, we have... Oh, we got a blue keycard, I can get in there. Now we're in the Duca Burger. I like this idea of just various levels of just Duke Nukem themed. And then Duke realizes that he's just a heavily marketed brand. It's a mild bit of a... Uh, it's not existentialism because he's more just like, this is bad quality and needs to be better. Hi, hi, oh my gosh, what, what ammo do I have? I have, oh, I've got my freeze thrower, don't I? There you go, it's about 15 of those shots. I love this, uh, backwards, <clears throat> think smaller as well. Oh, I'd like to take him out without, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to kick him, I'm gonna have to kick him. It's uh, a bit awkward. Yeah, a bit of an awkward fight. And again, my health is uh, crying on the inside. <sighs> I can just blow him up. Hey there, goopy enemies coming in from the vents. Time to kick him. Time to kick, 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 kick. Okay, so we're back up there. Does this lead anywhere else or no, it was just a dead end the other way. Okay, so why why can we be led around back up to here? I am hearing enemies though, so it's probably other doorways like this doorway, which just leads back outside. The lack of ammo is really getting to me though, I tell ya. And there's some really cool levels in this episode, but oh boy, I do remember just like, no ammo for anything. Okay, where, where am I going here? Let's see, we got some freeze, freeze ammo. Got the two bathrooms and there's, oh, oh yeah. That guy. I think... Can you use the freeze... the shrink rate? On the mirror you can, yeah. Very nice, very crafty, very inventive. I'm gonna watch out for these fellas. While I stand on the grill. my ammo again. Ooh. Got a little bit of chain gun ammo. Red key card. Eggs. Ooh. 
Dang it. <laughs> Gosh, man, it's tough. And I got crushed. Nice. Dang it, Randy. Add some ammo to your levels. Jeez, Randy. Dang it, Randy, please. Randy, why? Why do you do this to me, Randy? Oh my gosh, I got that right first go, and now it's like, yep, nope. Now you must suffer. That's the best I can do there. Where did he even come from? It's just yeah, behind you. Why not? Oh, right there. Oh, I got some, some shotgun and some extra freeze thrower. Nearly done with the level according to the kill count though. Uh, oh, we got a key card, so. Chilling in the, in the, uh, the freezer. Hey, some, some health. Finally. Better than acupuncture, that's the other game. Uh. going on in here, man? Is that what they do at, at Kentucky Fried? Poor Kentucky Fried, they don't deserve this slander. Definitely it's a dense level, I mean, you look at the map and it's like, oh, you got like rooms going all over so many other rooms, it's like... Nobody messes with my meat. Nice, but also... Oh boy. Oh boy. Eating dog is like such a, like... Although, d nice by the way. He can't get out, he can't hurt ya. Shit happens. You're saying it again. I would like to get those rockets, but... Oh well. Hi there. Hey, are they lying about the enemy count again? Be lying about the enemy can again. Groovy. And another picture of a dog. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, let's go for it. Oh. 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 It closed. How strange. It closed on me. Did I hit. Did I hit F10, like, real quick, by the way, just then? How odd. How odd. Hold on. We gotta finish this level. We gotta finish this level. How odd. I've been quick save spamming, so it's fine. Don't worry. But how odd. What? E-Duke 32, man. It's too intense. It's too intense. Alright, where we go? Uh... There you go. Right here. It's too intense. Get the heck out of Dodge, I don't want to be in that. And we're just back outside again, hold on. <laughs> but now we can activate that and reveal the red room. Where there's yet another alien. And there we go, we can now finish the level. Oh, nope, two aliens. Man, 
he does take his pistol bullets, doesn't he? Well, that's the end of that level, so we'll call it there. We've got uh, two levels down, nine to go of this episode, and we should be able to tackle the, uh, the 20th anniversary World Tour levels in the next stream. I know, we're sort of going all over the shop in terms of- oh my god, oh, jeez. Okay, well, that's a- that's a good place to end it. Kaboom. There we go. That's a good place to end it. So we'll handle that next stream. Uh, until then, I would like to thank you all so very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed this stream or you didn't enjoy it, doesn't really matter too much, but you can follow on Twitch, uh, where, yeah, I stream every 8.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Daylight Savings is coming up in a couple of months. A couple of months, not yet. Um, if you missed part of this VOD or any of the other VODs, including last week's VOD, uh, they're all on YouTube. Unless you're on YouTube, in which case you can subscribe. You'll get notified about them. They'll be on within a day or so of, the, of that. So, um, Also, you can follow me on the Feddy at m.bndale.com if you want to see some uh, silly things that I repost or retweet. or well, It's not tweeting over there. It's just posting, so... Um, but yeah, no, that's about it. Um, I'm having a good time. And, and even though Duke Nukem 3D is kicking my butt, you know, you make progress. You quick save scum, you get there. So stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late. Um, and uh, just remember, we're all in this crazy world together, I guess. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Have a good one, people. Peace.